Now, I did not expect coming into this week that we would be talking about the Bucks and Patriots to start off with. I figured this would be a pretty easy game for the Bucks to win, um, despite all of the hype surrounding the fact that Tom Brady was going back to New England. I didn't think it would be much of a game. I was wrong. The Bucks barely beat the Patriots 19-217 in Foxborough in Tom Brady's return. Yeah, so I think neither one of us really expected this game to be as competitive as it was. And we'll get into kind of the technicalities of how competitive it ended up being in a minute. But before that, I will give you the rundown of this game's stats. So for the Bucks, Tom Brady goes 22 for 43, brings in 269 yards, but actually does not throw for a touchdown nor an interception. So good on that part, I guess. Leonard Fournette rushes for 92 yards and adds in 47 receiving yards as well. Really just having a good game. Ronald Jones, however, uh, rushes for 25 yards and grabs a touchdown. I think that's the only one for Tampa, as the rest of their, their game was, was just field goaling the Patriots to death. Uh, Mike Evans <clears throat> led all receivers and targets and tied AB for, for receptions with seven, and he added in a team-high 75 receiving yards. Richard Sherman, the new pickup for the Bucks, also comes in and recovers a J.J. Taylor fumble, and Antoine Winfield Jr. picks off Mac Jones. So, for the Patriots... I have been a criticizer of Mac Jones for the past three weeks. Uh, I will not be this week. He went 31 for 40 with 275 yards through two touchdowns and only and a pick. Um, Jacoby Myers was his main man. He led all receivers with 70 yards. Myers also came in and threw two passes for 45 yards, which is interesting. Uh, today was tight. All right, that game was was a tight end day though, as Hunter Henry and Johnu Smith brought in the two Mac Jones touchdowns. The issue for the Patriots here was that Nick Folk returned to um, old Nick Folk, or I wouldn't even call it old, just he, he Nick Folk did what he does and he missed a game-winning field goal. However, I will say that the decision to kick a 56-yard field goal in the pouring rain with Nick Folk was probably not the best decision by Bill Belichick. They probably could have inched up the field a little more, but nonetheless, Nick Folk misses that field goal and the Patriots lose by two in a game where they probably should have lost by like 20. So uh, they did really good. Mac Jones came out and did amazing. Uh, Tom Brady not looking uh, super great, honestly. And um, I mean, he, he only threw two passes. This is this is a joke. But <laughs> Jacoby Myers at some points looked like a better QB than Tom Brady did in this game. In this, in this just this game. And that's also mostly a joke. So don't 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 come and crucify me. But. Nonetheless, the Bucks get it done, and they, they come out with the win, and uh, Tom Brady can kind of silence that whole part of, you know, be better be uh, <laughs> Belichick being better than, than him when it comes to a matchup against each other. Yeah, so to just jump off of that point, uh, I don't really think this matters too much as far as the Belichick-Brady rivalry. Like, obviously, last year, Brady went to the Bucks, won a Super Bowl in his first season, without <laughs> Bill... And Bill last year went seven and nine with a pretty man roster, but at the end of the day, didn't make the playoffs, didn't have a winning record for the first time in what twenty years. So people will say Brady got the leg up on Belichick there. Um, but I will say this is probably one of Tom Brady's uh I don't want to say worst games, because it's not like he was horrible, but it definitely was not a good game for Tom Brady. Um he did what he needed to do getting them into position to kick those many field goals that they had. Um, but there were a lot of times where it, it seemed like his accuracy was definitely off. I mean, obviously the rain played a factor in that, and he did have some of his receivers drop passes. Um, a big one was at the end of the game with A.B. in the end zone. Uh, that second one he definitely could have caught for sure. That first one, it kind of just seemed like, I don't know if there was, if there was miscommunication or maybe just like lost in the lights or with Tom threw it outside or whatever happened there. So that one, I'm not really going to fault AB for that. But the second one, he definitely could have caught, um, which would have gotten them a touchdown there. And then they wouldn't even have to really worry about the field goal on the other side. But regardless, uh, they did win that besides that. Um, Richard Sherman, you mentioned earlier, he got that J.J. Taylor fumble. That was pretty much mostly what Richard Sherman did. Uh, <laughs> did not have a good game at all. To be fair, he just got signed, like, what, last Wednesday. This is his first game in a good long time. Uh, and he basically came off of the street, said, heck, 
practicing a little bit. I didn't even think he was going to start, and he ends up starting. Uh, Carlton Davis ends up getting injured as well during the game, so the Buccaneers are starting to get very thin at cornerback, so they should probably think about making some moves at some point because Richard Sherman obviously won't be as bad as he was, but still you need a lot more depth at corner than they have. I think the biggest thing for the Buccaneers was the fact that they actually ran the ball in this game a whole lot more than they did against the Rams. That was something that we mentioned. Their running game against the Rams was pretty much non-existent. This time around, you got Leonard Fournette, almost 100 yards rushing, gets almost 50 yards receiving. Uh, Ronald Jones as well, he gets a touchdown, 25 yards, not a whole lot, but it was not a very you know, high-scoring type game, obviously based on the score, but it didn't. you could tell from the beginning, it didn't feel like it was going to be a 30-27 to 27 game or anything like that. For the Patriots to win, they need to keep it close. They needed to play as good of defense as they possibly could. And for the most part, they did. Obviously, Bucks did have some big plays here and there, but it wasn't really the Bucks offense that we're expecting to see. We know Gronk was out, but they still have tons of guys on offense. So it's not like there's really an excuse that you can have for the Bucks saying, oh, you know, Gronk's out. You know, the offense is gone now. Like, no, you still have all pro receivers. You got good running backs, you utilize them, and then you have the go at QB. So it wasn't very pretty for the Bucks, but they did get it done. And after you go, I'm going to go ahead and get on the Patriots performance. <laughs> okay, so I'll just go ahead and touch on kind of what you mentioned. Uh, we both talked on this last week about how the Bucks did not run the ball, and you just mentioned that that was definitely the game changer. They finally used their running backs. Um, Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones are both exceptional running backs. Um, uh, another offensive player that they were missing this week was Giovanni Bernard. He was kind of the star last week against the Rams. But uh, as you can see, I mean, he is definitely a running back three compared to Ronald and, and Frenette. And so it, I don't think they missed him too much. Maybe as a receiver they missed him because he got used heavily as a receiver. But at the same time, as Terrence is mentioning, they have Mike Evans, they have AB, they have Chris Godwin. I don't think missing people like Gronk or Bernard should have slowed down the offense as much as it got slowed down. So this was... An interesting and, and kind of sluggish game. But uh, just as we say, like, you don't really have moral victories. I don't think this would be, like, a, a moral loss. Like, oh, we barely squeaked past the Patriots. Like, definitely they're going to go back and watch the film and figure out why they barely beat the Patriots. But at the end of the day, a win is a win. And they get to walk away with that that dub in the stack column and, and move on. So that's probably the most important thing here. Definitely a lot of things to learn from. But I wouldn't say that this is something to, to hang their head from on the way out. And uh, Mac Jones. I know you about to touch on the Patriots. I just want to say Mac Jones definitely should not be upset about this performance. Uh, he came into a game where everybody was looking at how Tom Brady was going to kill his former team. And a lot of people were talking, I think more people were talking about Mac's performance against the Buccaneers defense than people were talking about Brady uh, against the, the Patriots. So he definitely uh, had his best game of the year. I, it sucks that it ended in a, a loss for him. But I will say that this is a good step in me becoming a, a slight believer <laughs> in Mac Jones and not just being a, 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 a critic. Yeah, I'm definitely a lot more of a Mac Jones fan than you are for sure. I'm not his biggest fan by any means. I still think they should have kept Cam, but they did what they had to do. Um, but his performance in this game was really good despite losing. And again, I'm not really a believer in more victories here, but he has to be impressed with his performance. And I think general media should be as well. By all accounts, he outplayed Tom Brady in New England, in Tom Brady's house that he was a part of for 20 years. He outplayed him straight up with lesser weapons. Um, obviously, I, we just mentioned this Buccaneers secondary, pretty much non-existent at this point. But it's not like Mac Jones has a track team either. He doesn't have Antonio Brown. He doesn't have a Chris Godwin or Mike Evans. Kobe Myers is basically his number one receiver. He does have two good tight ends, though. Hunter Henry and John New Smith, like you said, they both showed up finally. Um, they got they got it done in this game. Considering the fact that they got paid so much in the offseason to come here, they need to step up, and they did. Um, but Mac Jones, he does have a lot of check downs, and they do a lot of screens and stuff. But I have to admit, like he played well, almost 300 yards, that one pick. Is mainly due to the pressure that he was getting 
the offensive line definitely has to do a lot better for New England because they're probably going to get him killed by the end of the season because Matt Jones isn't him in the fact that he's going to be able to run 20 yards down the field if he's getting a bunch of people in his face. Matt Jones isn't that guy. So they need to do a lot better when protecting Mac. But considering the circumstances, nobody was really expecting much out of the Patriots here. Nobody was really looking at Mac Jones to say, you know, okay, is this going to be a Mac Jones game, which it turned out to be. And he stepped up and he almost got them to win. He put them in good spots. Uh, he was careful with the ball. Like I said, that pick wasn't really his fault there. So I have to give Mac Jones props. And to the Patriots defense, you know, they did the best they could for the most part. Like I said, I mean, they couldn't really stop him on the run, but they were able to contain the passing game a lot better uh, than teams that have played the Patriots over the past, you know, year and a half or so. Uh, excuse me, the Bucks over the last year and a half or so. So you have to give them props. Um, now, there are a few miscues here. You know, like we mentioned, the interception, the fumble, that cost them because the Patriots had those two turnovers. Bucks didn't have any. So if you lose the turnover battle, you're generally going to lose the game, especially if you have a two to nothing differential there. Um, but the end of the game decision, Going for that field goal was it 56 yards at the end. I understand why he kicked it, but at that point, I think Bill probably should have said, you know what, let's go for it on fourth down. Um, try to at least get a few more yards because you had enough time. It's not like they didn't have that much time. Because if Nick Folk had made that field goal, you give Tom Brady 50 seconds or so. Yeah, and all he needs is a field goal now. So I think they would have somehow found a way to get down the field and then kick a last second field goal um, against the Patriots to win that one regardless. So I think it's, it's not a bad decision. Again, I don't think it's a horrible decision by Bill to say, you know, all right, Nick, go ahead and try to get the game winner here. We just had to leave him in the hands of our defense. But I definitely do think he probably should have gone for that fourth down, got more yards, then try to kick a field goal with more time off the clock. Um, but Again, if if this was, if I believed in more victories, I would say this was a more victory for the Patriots. You almost beat the Buccaneers. Um, I don't think the Buccaneers will look that bad again, but at least you can say, all right, this is what we need to do on defense. You know, Mac Jones was good. Eliminate the turnovers, eliminate some of the dumb plays, and I think Patriots can possibly turn it around because obviously not being one in three, they're not looking very good. Um, overall, but very early in the season, you don't have to press the panic button just yet. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think with any record that any team has at this moment, uh, you can get a general idea of maybe how they're going to shape out. But if your team's 0 and 3 or 1 and 3 or anything like that, you don't need to panic now. There's plenty of time to, to bounce back. We have an extra game this season, and uh, it's far, far, far from over. <laughs> 